All right, our uh, second speaker of the afternoon is Vijay Bhutiparlu, speaking on approximation algorithms for quadratic form maximization over convex sets. Thanks for having me. Right, so I'm going to talk about approximation algorithms and quadratic maximization over convex sets. Um, so I, I'd like to maybe spend the first 10 minutes on the broad area I work in, and then maybe the last five minutes on my specific work. Um, so I'll, I'll start by giving an introduction to, to what the broad area is, approximation algorithms. I work in this area called approximation algorithms and hardness of approximation. And uh, so many, many algorithmic tasks or uh, like many optimization problems um, are believed to be hard to solve exactly. And uh, on, on the other hand, they can actually be solved approximately. We can get constant factor approximation to the optimum. Um, and uh, so an answer question is, which optimization problems do we believe? Uh, you know, there exist polynomial time algorithms that get a constant factor approximation. Here I mean multiplicatively. Okay. Um, and, you know, what do such algorithms typically look like? Now, a remarkable phenomenon in the area is that um, th there are a very small number of approximation algorithms, each of which you know, is applicable to a, to a diverse range of problems and tends to be the optimal algorithm for a diverse range of problems. So the one I'll focus on today um, is, is this class of algorithms called convex programming. And uh, for the purpose of today, when I say convex programming, I refer to the following task. You want to maximize a linear function over a convex set, and you're given a membership oracle for the convex set. So you have an oracle that says yes if a point is inside the set, and no if it's not. And uh, um, an important uh, paradigm in, the, the, in optimization theory is that um, this can be done exactly in polynomial time and the, in the ambient dimension. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, lastly, one of the questions uh, we're interested in the area is, um, can one show that no other algorithm can, can improve on um, a certain algorithm's constant? Okay, so I mean, typically we need to assume some complexity theoretic conjecture because such statements imply P doesn't equal MP. Okay, so, so one would look to prove, let's say, assuming P doesn't equal MP, um, is a certain algorithm achieving the optimal constant for a particular optimization problem. Okay, these statements are highly non-trivial and, and the theory of probabilistically checkable groups was actually developed to answer questions like this. I won't go into this too much, but if there's interest, I may answer some questions about this in the end. Uh, yeah, so let's look at a concrete example. Um, so this is an optimization problem. Given a graph G, I want to find a partition of the vertices that maximizes the number of edges going across the partition. So maximizes the number of edges that are cut. Okay, the, this, this problem is referred to as the max cut problem. Okay. And uh, it's, it's very easy to see that uh, there's an easy two approximation algorithm for this problem. So if you just take every vertex and randomly assign it to a partition, um, it's, it's easy to check that with high probability, um, a half fraction of the edges straddle the partition. Okay, so, and, and because the cut has size at most the number of edges, this is a two approximation. Okay, it turns out you can do much better. Um, you can actually get a 1.14 approximation algorithm using convex programming. Uh, and I, I'm going to describe this in detail soon, um, but I'll, I'll start with I'll start with uh, speaking more generally. So I'll, I'll, I'll describe the general strategy in the area. How do we, you know, how do we how do we use convex programming to approximate certain optimization problems? And then I'll instantiate it on max curve later in the talk. Okay. And uh, one remarkable thing is this convex programming algorithm actually achieves the optimal constant, assuming some other complexity theoretic conjecture. Okay, so, uh, so regarding the general paradigm I promised, you're given some, let's say, combinatorial optimization problems. And uh, you're, what you do is you relax the region you're optimizing over to a, to a convex region. Okay. Um, to give a more specific example, let's say we have some complicated set S1 and we want to maximize a linear function over this set and we don't know how to do it. What we do is we define a set S2 that is larger containing the set S1 and is convex. And so we can use our convex programming algorithm. Of course, the optimum return by S2 might be much larger, but the hope is if you choose S2 judiciously, you get an approximation. Okay, 
So in the picture, we can imagine the, the inner set as the set S1 and the outer set as the, as the convex set S2. Okay. And finally, you know, uh, yeah, so we, so we can solve this convex program exactly using, using the algorithm I mentioned earlier. And uh, finally, you, you, you take the optimal solution you got and you map it back to the original region. Okay, this also, this part of the algorithm also has freedom. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, in, in most cases, in most cases, it turns out that uh, an approximation algorithm comes equipped with such a rounding algorithm. So I'll refer to this, this final step of, of taking a point in the outer region and mapping back to the inner region as a rounding algorithm. Okay, and yeah, another remarkable thing is that often this, this type of algorithm is the best polynomial time approximation algorithm for, for, for a wide class of problems. Of course, under certain complexity assumptions. Right, so, so let's instantiate the strategy on MaxCut and say a little bit more about it. Okay, so I just reformulated the maximum cut in the graph problem, this algebraically for convenience. All right, so the goal is to maximize summation one minus xi xj over two, where x, you know, these variables x are plus minus one. So setting xi to plus one corresponds to putting it in one partition, one side of the partition, and minus one is the other side. All right, and this one minus xi xj over two is just, it's a function that's um, one when an edge is stra straddling the cut and zero otherwise. Okay, so, so I just, you know, trivially reformulated the problem. And now we're actually going to relax this, this non-convex problem to a, to a convex problem. In fact, we're going to relax it to a higher dimensional region that is convex. So what we're going to do is we replace every variable xi by a vector ui. Okay. And, uh, and just symbolically, we replace the product xi xj by the inner product of the vectors ui and uj. Okay. And uh, the constraint that xi needs to be plus or minus one is replaced by the constraint that this vector ui is on the unit sphere. Okay. Um, just stated another way, ui inner product with itself is equal to one. Okay. Now uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reformulate this in a way that makes it more evident why it's convex. Um, so now, now just just making the substitution, xij is equal to the, the inner product of ui and uj. Um, we see that we're searching for a matrix X that's PSD has diagonal entries equal to one and it's inner product with some matrix needs to be maximized. So we're maximizing a linear function in X over, over the intersection of the positive semi definite cone and the subspace. Okay. <laughs> and uh, finally, the rounding algorithm. Once we get this optimal vector that we solve for, and this optimal set of vectors that we solve for, is to just sample a random hyperplane through the origin and give a vertex plus one if its vector is on one side of the hyperplane and give it minus one if its vector is on the other side of the hyperplane. Yeah, and uh, remarkably, it turns out this achieves a 1.14 approximation and it was proved by Gomez and Williamson in a classical result. Uh, and uh, and yeah and, and you know it, it turns out assuming this complexity theoretic conjecture this is this is the best you can do okay no other algorithm can get a better approximation and uh, and this phenomenon is much more general so Raghavendra proved this beautiful result that for a wide class of discrete optimization problems known as constraint satisfaction problems a certain natural convex programming relaxation is the best polytime approximation algorithm, assuming this complexity theoretic conjecture. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so coming to my interest, so I want to develop this theory for a, for a class of continuous optimization problems, specifically quadratic maximization over a convex set. Right. So, so our goal is to give a polynomial time approximation algorithm. And our input is a matrix A, an N cross N matrix A. And moreover, we're given an oracle computing a norm x over rn. Okay, and the goal is to compute the maximum of x in a product with ax, such that x middle x is in the unit ball of the norm capital x. Okay. Um, in other words, just maximize summation aij xi xj such that middle x ranges over the unit ball of the norm capital x. 
And it, it, it turns out this is, this is a very rich class of optimization problems. Like earlier in the talk, you saw that maximizing a linear function over a convex set is an easy task. Somewhat counterintuitively, maximizing a quadratic function is, can be a very hard task. So depending on the choice of the convex set, it turns out that this can either be very tractable, as in we can get a constant factor approximation, or it can actually be really, really hard, as in no algorithm can even get a polynomial factor approximation. Let's see some concrete examples of, of this. All right, so um, if we take the norm as L2, this is the familiar maximum eigenvalue. And this can be computed exactly. And uh, if we take the norm as L infinity and, and we specialize the set of matrices to the Laplacian of a graph, we recover the problem we talked about earlier, max cup. Right? And, and as I showed you, we have this constant factor approximation. And uh, if we consider the case of L infinity, but for more general, for more general linear operators, not all of them, more general linear operators, we actually obtain growth index inequality. The, the, the case of growth index inequality, which is the famous inequality, appears in several different areas. And there again, we can get a constant factor approximation. Okay. Um, and uh, for LP norms where P is less than two, this relates to a certifying hypercontractivity of a linear operator. Again, if you haven't noticed some of these things, don't worry about it. I'm just trying to give you a sense of the different areas it touches the part and how it's the classes. Um, now, in the case of certified hypercontractivity, the best approximation factor we know is polynomial in that. And there is some evidence that one can't do significantly better than that. So, so the hypercontractive case is actually quite hard. Right, so we see something strange here that for P less than two, it seems to be hard, but for P greater than or equal to two, it seems to be easy. Right, um, yeah, you know, some non-LP example, if we take the Shannon infinity norm, just another, another way of saying the maximum singular value. So now A is an n squared cross n squared matrix, mapping a space of matrices to a space of matrices. And the space of matrices is endowed with the norm of maximum singular value. Okay. So this actually corresponds to non, the non-commutative growth index inequality, where again, a constant factor approximation algorithm is available. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, you know, given, given how expressive this is, you know, the questions I'm interested in broadly are, um, yeah, I want to extend this theory of approximation algorithms to, to this rich family of problems. And uh, the hope is that, you know, this theory can be used to obtain new algorithmic and impossibility results by treating it in a principled manner. Okay, for both continuous and combinatorial optimization problems. Um, and, you know, more specifically, yeah, how does the approximability of this problem depend on the geometry of the norm x? Right? When do constant factor approximation algorithms exist? And uh, when is convex programming the optimal algorithm? Right, and you know, finally, in, in some recent work with Liu Yongli and Asaf Naur, we make some progress towards these questions. Specifically, we give a generic framework for, for quadratic maximization um, that has the following features. It encompasses situations where uh, prior concept factor algorithms were known. Um, and then it, it gives some new examples, some new families of examples where we obtain concept factor approximations. Um, and uh, for special classes of norms, we actually obtain a complete categorization. So, for example, if the norm is symmetric, is symmetric to permutation and flipping signs of the entries, um, yeah, I, I should conclude. Yeah, so, if the norm is symmetric to permutation and flipping signs, or if the norm is unitarily invariant, if it's a unitarily invariant matrix norm, we have a characterization. It turns out that it's, it's very closely related to the type two constant of the norm X. That's it, thank you. Questions for the speaker? Uh, is, is that true if you're just given an oracle or you need to have some kind of max representation of the boundary? Uh, it's true just if you're given an oracle. So it, it turns out that if you have a membership oracle for a convex set, um, an exact membership oracle, you can actually um, use it to construct a separation oracle. 
which means if the point is outside the body, you can always find the hyperplane separating the two. There's an algorithm that does this. Um, however, if, if I tell you even that, let's say, um, I, I mean, I give you an approximate membership oracle, um, th then actually this, this completely breaks down and, and you, you in fact need something about the boundary to, to do anything. Any other questions? Yeah, so there the norm is L infinity, which is symmetric. Yeah. Um, so the, the problem instance doesn't need to be symmetric. So the graph doesn't need to be symmetric, just the norm does. And, and yes, so, so our algorithm for the symmetric case recovers that. Um, not, not the same constant, but it recover, recovers an absolute constant. No other questions? Let's thank the speaker again.